Managing Users and Privileges in PHPMyAdmin. This tutorial will show you how to manage users and privileges in PHPMyAdmin. Many systems are configured with control panel software installed used to delegate the administration of the accounts on the server. Whenever possible, it is recommended that you use the controls within the control panel itself for certain tasks, such as the creation of databases, creation of users, management of user privileges, etc., instead of phpMyAdmin. Performing these tasks outside of the control panel can produce undesirable results in the operation of the control panel software. For this tutorial, we are connected to PHP MyAdmin using the root MySQL user. When connecting as another user, some options may be disabled, dependent on the server's configuration and the specific privileges granted to the user by the system administrator. On systems configured to use Plesk, the master MySQL user is the admin user instead of root. Other users will only see and be able to access databases that they have been given the privileges to access. From the Plesk control panel, database users are limited to one database per user. All privileges are granted at the database level for each user, and all users are granted access with the wildcard value percent for the host permitting users to connect from anywhere. Plesk also provides no controls for modifying privileges from within the control panel. cPanel servers also grant permissions at the database level, however, specific permissions can be selected for different users, and access can be granted to multiple databases. On Linux-based systems, database names, database users, table names, and column names are case-sensitive, whereas on Windows-based systems, these names are case-insensitive. Users and permissions are stored as records in a special database named MySQL. First, let's look at the structure for the records. Click the MySQL database. Privileges can be granted for specific tasks at various levels in the database engine. Privileges granted at more specific levels will take precedence over permissions denied at less specific levels. Click the User table. Privileges granted in the User table are global for all databases in the engine for a user connecting from a specified host. The values in this table also handle the authentication for users when they connect. Click the Host table. Privileges granted here are for all users connecting to specified databases from specified hosts. Users will have to have the privilege to connect from the specified host granted in the User table for these privileges to apply. Click the DB table. Privileges granted in this table allow specific tasks to be granted for specified databases for a user connecting from a specified host without granting the privileges for other databases on the server. Click the tables underscore priv table. Privileges granted in this table allow specific tasks to be granted for specified tables in a database for a user connecting from a specified host without granting the privilege for other tables in the database. Privileges above table level are stored as a Y or an N value in a column for the privilege to grant or deny the privilege. Privileges at the table level and column level are stored with the privilege name in a list of privileges in the record. Click the Columns underscore Priv table. Privileges granted in this table allow specific tasks to be granted for specified columns in specific tables in specific databases for a user connecting from a specified host without granting the privileges to other columns. 
click the prox underscore priv table. This table holds the privileges for any stored procedures that may be written for your databases. Privileges can be managed by manipulating the data in the MySQL database directly, but this is strongly discouraged if you do not know what you're doing. Now that we've covered the structure, let's look at the controls PHP MyAdmin provides for managing users and privileges. Click the Home icon. Click the Privileges link. Next, let's add a new user. Click the Add a new user link. Select a username option. You can add permissions to connect without a username from a particular host, but this is usually not done. Enter the new username. Select a host option. For most purposes where a script on the server will be connecting to the database, you will want to select local for the host. If you also need to connect from a remote location, it is recommended that you create a second user with the same name and the IP address or host name of the location from which you will be connecting. Selecting any host will insert the percent wildcard value for the host, which will allow a connection by the user from anywhere. It is not recommended unless absolutely necessary as it is considered a security risk. Select a password option. Let's use the option to let PHP MyAdmin generate a secure password for us. Click the Generate button. Click the Copy button. PHP MyAdmin gives you the option to just create the user, create a empty database for the user, and grant all permissions on that database, or grant permissions to databases prefixed with the user's username followed by an underscore. Here we can select the specific permissions to grant this user. Permissions granted here will be written to the user table and global to all databases on the system. However, since we are granting permissions only at the database level, we're not going to grant them globally. These options can be used to limit the resources used by the user so they're not too resource intensive for the system. Click the Go button. Here is the database that was created for the user. Let's look at the permissions for this user at the database level. Click the Privileges tab. Click the Edit Privileges icon. Here we could alter the privileges that are granted for this database at the database level. If we remove permissions at the database level, we could grant them here at the table level. In order to grant permissions at the table level, the table will need to exist or you will need to grant create permission to the user. 
Next, let's look at how to alter the permissions at the table level for a user and a database where the structure of the database already exists. Click the database name. Click the Privileges tab. Click the Edit Privileges icon. First, let's remove all privileges for this user at the database level. Click the Uncheck All link. Now let's re-grant the select privilege at the database level. This will allow the user to request records but not add, edit, or remove any records to or from the database. Click the Select checkbox. Click the Go button. Now, let's grant other permissions at the table level for this user. Select a table. Select the columns for each column-specific privilege to grant. Hold the control key to select multiple privileges in each field. Since the select privilege is already granted at the database level, there is no need to grant it at the table or column level. Selecting all of the columns in the table for a specific privilege will grant that privilege at the table level. Selecting some of the columns in the table for a specific privilege will grant the privilege at the column level for the selected columns. Click the checkboxes for the rest of the permissions you want to grant. Since these privileges by nature affect all columns in the table, they can only be granted at the table level and not at the column level. Click the Go button. Now let's remove the privileges. Click the database name. Click the Privileges tab. Click the Edit Privileges icon. Click the Revoke icon. Now let's go back to the user we initially created. Click the Privileges tab. Click the Edit Privileges icon. Here we can reset the password for the user. MySQL stores passwords using a one-way encryption function. With version 4.1, the algorithm used to encrypt passwords was improved for security. However, for backward compatibility, the option to use old function is still available. It is only recommended that the 4.0 compatible option be used when needed for this purpose. These options can be used to change the username and or password for the user. It can also be used to create a new user based off of this one. Scroll back to the top of the page. Next, let's delete the user. Click the Privileges tab.
click the checkbox. This option can be used to remove the database that was created along with the user. It will also remove privileges from other users that may have been granted permissions to access the database. Click the Go button. Privileges are loaded as part of the startup process for MySQL. Changes to the privileges would not take effect until either the process is restarted or the privileges are reloaded. Let's reload the privileges which will make the changes we have made take effect. Click the Home icon. Click the Reload Privileges link. Congratulations! You now know how to manage users and privileges in PHP MyAdmin.